in the name of God, the most compassionate, the most merciful. Welcome to Islam for Dummies. Previously, we discussed the Quran's description of the expanding universe. Today, we will be talking about the Quran's description of the Big Bang and the common origin of all space and matter. It is important to point out that while it is not a science textbook, yet the Quran mentions numerous scientific facts long before they were discovered. First, we will examine the creation of the universe through the Big Bang. When you look out at the universe and look at the other distant galaxies, you see that they're all fleeing away from us, that they're all moving outward at huge velocities. You extrapolate that all the way back, you see that one time, maybe 13 or 14 billion years ago, everything that there was must have been compressed into one inconceivably dense point. <laughs> Whatever the universe was at the very beginning, some 13.7 billion years ago, we think it was tiny, an infinitesimal nugget of space. And then something happened, triggering the most colossal explosion in history. It seems there was an explosion so huge that it created an entire universe. The Big Bang. No one knows what caused it, but we think that the bang created space, time, and all the matter in the universe. In summary, this Quranic verse states two scientifically accurate facts about the creation of the universe through the Big Bang. Number one, the common origin of all space and matter. The heavens and the earth were both joined. And number two, the violent separation that created all the matter in the universe. Then we tore them apart. Second, we will examine the false claim that the common origin, stated in chapter 21 verse 30, is similar to the beliefs of other societies at that time. Let's listen to discuss Islam's false claim. That the heavens and the earth were one piece before we clove them asunder. It does, however, follow very precisely creation mythologies that were believed in at the time of Muhammad. <laughs> Firstly, the most widely held belief at that time was the Greek view of an eternal universe. According to the Sumerians, the heavens had been separated from the earth. Secondly, regarding the Sumerians. Their beliefs on the matter of cosmic creation must often be gleaned from wholly unrelated texts, because no direct texts exist. In any case, their gleaned beliefs were clearly unrelated to the Quran in that the primal unformed mass of heaven and earth was given birth to by Nemu. Thereafter, it was the union of heaven with earth which produced the great gods. Discuss Islam is also confused about the ancient Egyptian beliefs. And the idea that the heavens and the earth were one single block that was broken into two was common in ancient Egypt. Thirdly, this is an utter fabrication. According to Crystalinks.com and other sources, the ancient Egyptians believed that during the day the gods Jeb and his twin sister wife Newt are separated, but each evening Newt comes down to meet Jeb, and this causes darkness. She gives birth to the sun in the east and swallows the sun in the west. The meeting of the Egyptian gods, Jeb and his twin sister wife, Newt, to cause night and day, is not even remotely similar to verse 2130. 
Fourthly, both the Sumerian and ancient Egyptian civilizations died out more than 700 years before the Koran, and their beliefs were only discovered recently by archaeologists. As a result, the Quran's accurate description of the common origin of all matter in the heavens and the earth is very different from the ridiculous beliefs of ancient societies. Third, we will examine the false notion that the terminology used in this verse does not match with science. Here's the false claim about verse 2130 which states that the heavens and the earth were both joined before being torn apart. The Big Bang is not about a lump blowing up. Matter did not exist to be cloven asunder. And there was certainly no splitting of earth from heaven. Every single part of Discuss Islam's statement is incorrect. As we saw earlier, just prior to the Big Bang. Everything that there was must have been compressed into one inconceivably dense point. And the final false claim is that. One can hardly think of a more inaccurate description of the Big Bang than this verse. In fact, it is the term Big Bang that is inaccurate, while the verse is quite precise. It was meant to be a derisive term. However, the Big Bang is really a contradiction because it was not big and there was no bang. It wasn't big because we think that the universe started from a singularity of some sort. And there was no bang because there was no air to carry the vibrations. So a Big Bang is in some sense is a misnomer, but the name stuck. In contrast to the term Big Bang, the Quran's description is perfectly accurate to any rational person. Thinking uh, where Muhammad came from, he was after all a Bedouin. I think it is almost impossible that he could have known about things like the common uni uh, origin of the universe because scientists have only found out within the last few years with very complicated and advanced technological methods that this is the case. And somebody who did not know something about nuclear physics 1400 years ago could not, I think, be in a position to find out from his own mind, for instance, that the earth and the heavens had the same origin. Having demonstrated the clear meaning of this verse, if one were to scrutinize further the Quran's literal translation, the word joined is actually stitched together and the word door also applies to fabric. We already admitted that the Quran is not a science textbook. So is it fair to critique the Quran's terminology against the terminology used by Einstein? Let's see about that. In 1905, Einstein published his theory of special relativity, which explored the link between space and time. In Einstein's view, there isn't really a separate thing. There's space and then there's time. But there's just one thing, space-time, that we all live in. He thought of this new space-time as a fabric weaving together space and time. In 1915, Einstein developed his theory of general relativity, which modified special relativity to include gravity and its effects on this fabric of space-time. Mass is a term used to describe the energy and matter that objects contain. The larger the mass of an object, the greater its distortion of the space-time fabric the stronger the effects of gravity. Gravity is not really a force. It's a fabric. It's a shape of space and time. As a result, the Quran's description of the common origin and violent separation of all matter is not only more precise than the term of Big Bang itself, but the terminology of fabric stunningly coincides with Einstein's descriptions of space and matter. In conclusion, 
The Quran chapter 21 verse 30 correctly states that everything in the universe came from a common origin before being ripped apart. The Quran accurately describes the Big Bang better than the term itself, while this scientific discovery could not have been known 1400 years ago. Furthermore, the verse's unusual terminology of fabric is amazingly identical to the ingenious description of space and matter by elite scientists like Einstein. And as usual, those attempting to refute the Koran's clear signs have only succeeded in proving their own ignorance about the scientific evidence and about the beliefs of ancient societies. We sincerely hope you enjoyed this episode of Islam for Dummies, and we hope to see you again next time.